Hello. Um, what I'm going to be working on today is restoring this Lionel uh, replica steam locomotive. This is a 1947 Lionel train. It is what they call the uh, Pennsylvania Railroad number 675. It is a 262 wheel configuration, sometimes referred to as the Prairie model. Um, this belongs to my brother. Uh, it actually was uh, his father-in-law's uh, who received it as a uh, Christmas gift in the 1940s as a young boy. And um, my brother and his son now like to set it up at Christmas time. I recently restored the transformer, which is the controller that runs the locomotive. Um, and he reports that the engine still doesn't work right. So I said, send it to me. So we'll take it apart. And um, I'm going to reset the camera here, give you a better shot. Um, we're going to take this completely apart, uh, test out the, you know, the electrical components in the motor to see if the windings are good and so forth. We'll clean everything, um, get it back together, and hopefully it'll be good as new. So here we go. All right, so step one is some, some disassembly. I'm going to start by uh, taking some things off the bottom beginning with these wheel trucks. All right, there, there's the front wheel truck. I use these magnetic dishes to put my parts in as a little lock washer. Let's take the rear one off. Okay. And that has a shoulder screw that holds it on. And then here is the thing that connects to the tender car. All right, I think the next thing I'm going to take off um, will be this piece here on the front. Not sure what it is. I'm not a train guy, by the way. My brother had an HO set up when we were growing up as kids, um, but it was nothing like these Lionel trains, which are really superior quality. Okay, this has got more holding it together than I want to take apart just yet. Ooh, there's the front, and there's a light bulb in the front that's <laughs> being held in with a twist tie. So that's obviously not correct. We'll fix that. Um, all right, so, oh, I see. The little clip that holds the light has been broken, so we're going to have to fix that. And there is the light bulb, which I'll take out. All right, there's more to this. Uh, one more screw in here. Here we go. All right, so that gets the front of the train off. And then we can see this piece here, which uh, connects to the drive wheels. And then this is the uh, <laughs> this is the little chamber that generates smoke. I'm not quite sure how it works, but um, you put a couple drops of oil down this thing, and apparently it uh, it smokes. So there's a wire connected to it. It must it must generate some heat and um, and cook the oil. That's very interesting. All right, uh, let's see what we want to do next. I guess we're going to get all of these side control arms off. And um, looks like we've got a Phillips head here. Oh, too big. Try this one. And then that disconnects. Oh, and then we've got a uh, got a piece in the middle there. All right, so that goes together like so with that. And then this over it, and then this with the pin going all the way through. That's how that all goes together. So we got to remember that. And that slides right off the front. Looks like. Another screw here. And that allows.
allows us to remove that connecting rod. And we have some connecting for the drive wheels here. We'll try this. Okay. Lionel trains uh, are really nice quality, especially the uh, the ones uh, right after the war. They hadn't started cheapening them up yet. You know, um, American manufacturing really took a change uh, in the years after World War II. Prior to World War II and, and immediately after, uh, American manufacturing was the envy of the world. We, we made some really great stuff. And... Um, these Lionel trains are a good example of that. These were made in New York. Um, the quality of, of the parts, the quality of the manufacturer, the design is really just beautiful. And what happened after World War II is we started to get uh, more competition from overseas goods. And um, that resulted in a drop in uh, prices of consumer goods. And that drop in prices of consumer goods changed consumer expectations. And so companies like Lionel that have been manufacturing very high quality products found that there were now lower cost alternatives. And, to, and in order to be competitive, they had to start reducing the costs of their products. And uh, unfortunately, the way they did that was to start uh, cheapening them up, if you will, uh, start... Uh, by eliminating some of the ornamental features, make the manufacturing a little simpler and quicker, and I'll be able to drop the price. And, um, and that happened in every realm of manufacture in this country after the war. So by the time you get into the late 50s and 60s, these companies uh, that had been known for these beautiful quality products were, were really producing stuff that was much lower quality than it had been 20 years earlier. So um, a um, train like this one from 1947 represents kind of the end of the era of really great quality um, manufacture. And so this is well worth restoring. There's going to be, I'm sure, a lot of life left in this train. Um, we just need to get it all apart, get it all cleaned up, and... Um, see what if anything is going on my brother says that about half the time when they put this on the track and turn on the transformer it doesn't move and uh so that suggests that there's either some pretty poor electrical contact happening which is not energizing the motor correctly or my fear i hope it doesn't turn out to be the case is that the the windings in the motor might be bad uh and we will test all that i have a an electrical meter here so when we get the motor apart we'll be able to see what's going on with the windings and the field coil and so forth and um, know exactly what the problem is and if we're lucky uh, the motor components will be good and it will just be a matter of uh, a good cleaning of the commutator bars where the brushes make contact and that kind of thing and um, and if we're lucky that will get the engine uh, working again and if it turns out that the motor is bad I was looking on eBay and there are lots of people selling these some of them uh, you can buy parts I see several of the motors the, the, the electrical motors available and um, and also whole locomotives um, in parts condition um, all right so now I think what I want to do is see if we can get the whole motor assembly out of here. I've never taken one of these apart before, so you guys are my guinea pig here to see how this works. It looks like possibly this screw here will be the key that unlocks the puzzle. We'll find out here in just a moment. So this whole shaft here holds the front in. Hmm. I'm 
look, oh, there's a, there's a screw right there. So let's take that one out, and I think the mower is going to come out. Yes, there we go. So now we have the, uh, the really nice casting of the uh, locomotive body. We'll set that aside. All of these parts are going to need a thorough cleaning. I have a, a, a um, parts cleaner that I use for clocks. It's an ultrasonic cleaner, and I have a nice chemical solution that I use. It works very, very well for that. So we'll get all these parts clean. All right, so now what we're going to want to do is take this motor apart. I'm going to start um, right here. These are the brushes, and underneath that, right here, these are the commutator bars. As the motor stator turns, those commutator bars make contact with these brushes, and that's what energizes the motor. So let's have a look and see how those look. I'm going to start using another dish here for the motor part so I don't mix them up. Okay, so these are the, the brushes. And they are dirty, that's for sure. And there is the commutator on the motor. And you can see that the commutator surface is very, very dirty. I wouldn't be surprised to find out that that... Um, just cleaning that up might get everything working correctly, but I don't want to make that judgment until we've been able to test everything. All right, it looks like there's some things on this side. There's some gearing. So one of these wheels, I'm not sure which one, will be directly driven. And the others are then connected with these gears so that they all work together. And um, so we're going to clean all that, too. So let's take this off and see what we've got. Okay, so there, whoops, that is the shaft on the end of the motor. So the motor is driving these train of gears right through here. And so I'm not sure how we get this out yet. Looks like looks like we've got to get some wheels off of here before we can go any further. Um, I'm not sure how those wheels are attached. They might be pressed on. Don't want to damage anything. And I'm just looking to see, are there any other, well, there's this screw here, which I'm going to take out. Okay, and now, all right, so now we have some of the electrical out. Interesting. This is twisted together to make it fit. And I can see that um, hmm. I'm not sure what this switch does. This is an electrical switch. I think this might be the reversing switch. There was a lever lever on the front and I yes, it comes up here. And I think that might reverse the motor. I'm not sure. So that's what this, this switch assembly does that. It is soldered to the field coil here and down here to the ground. Um, and I'm not seeing any other screws. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume that these wheels are on here as a press fit. And I'm gonna see if I can Get that to move. I don't want to break anything here. These are old. Mm. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little bit of penetrating oil on there. 
And then I'm going to take a break here, and I'm going to do a little online research. I, I'm sure there's some YouTube videos out there that will show people taking these wheels off. And that's how I'm going to do it, because I just don't want to proceed and do any damage here. This is much too nice a, a unit to risk any damage. All right, so I'm going to pause there. All right, so I'm back. I've uh, watched a uh, YouTube video on how to remove these wheels, which means I'm now an expert. You can see I've got the first one off. They are pressed on. If you look closely, you can see here. I'll be, you can see there are splines on the axle, so it's a press fit. I can take a punch and punch this wheel off. I may actually leave it on. There's really no reason to, to take it off the axle. I can clean it like that. Um, so we're going to proceed and take the other wheels off. We can't get this motor out until we get uh, at least one more wheel off. So I'm just using the two screwdriver method. There is a way to do this with a wheel puller, but you need a special narrow wheel puller. I have a couple of wheel pullers, but nothing that's going to work here. Okay, this is coming off. Here we go. And we can pull that drive wheel out. And now on this side, you can see that uh, the gear, the driver gear has come off as well. There's the middle gear with the axle. And now I'm able to remove the motor. And look at how dirty that is. Good grief. Um, and there's the commutator. So this is going to require a thorough cleaning. And um, and I'm going to take a good guess. We'll, we'll be able to test this for continuity and uh, determine if it's good or bad. And um, we'll use the electric meter to do that. I'm gonna set that aside and let's get this last wheel off. I'm gonna put a screwdriver underneath here and on here. So there's the last of the wheels and the driver gears. Okay. And it looks like the plates, there's a kind of like a clock where you've got things between plates. This assembly, these are the pickups that pick up the power off the track. And inside is the field coil for the motor. And these things are soldered to it. I'm probably going to cut these wires because these old cloth covered insulation wires are not very good. I'm going to re-solder on some new modern wires. So I'm going to go ahead and clip those off. And we got to make note. Um, Okay, this one goes to the field coil. I'm going to label that. I'm going to just, I don't want to get anything mixed up here. So that's field coil. So we'll put that piece of tape on there. That's now labeled so I don't mix it up. And this one here is the ground. Okay, so I'm going to make a, make a label for ground, just GND. Okay. I'm sure there are wiring diagrams available, but now that's that switch assembly and the brush holder. We're going to clean all of that. And this can now be thoroughly cleaned. I'm going to drop that in the ultrasonic to clean it. And I don't see anything that's going to get damaged from doing that. And so I'm going to turn off the video and uh, proceed with with parts cleaning, which is... Uh, okay, so I've got most of the parts cleaned. Uh, the die cast body and the cow catcher and the, <clears throat> and the front cover. I just wash these in the sink with Dawn dish soap. Um, it's really good at getting grease off and uh, these cleaned up very, very well. So that I'm not going to do anything further with, with this casting. It looks great. 
The paint on it's pretty good. The number is still there. The little stainless steel handrail is in very good shape. It's actually held in on the inside with looks like cotter pins. These these little attachment points just have tabs that bend over on the inside. So that's all good. Um, this is the front. I'd call it the cow catcher assembly. Some railroad guys are going to tell me I'm wrong, but that's that piece is in very good shape, all clean. Here's the front cover, and this is going to need to be. I'm looking at this and. That's not made to be taken apart. So to, to replace this clip where the light bulb goes, what I may do is look on, on eBay and I may be able to buy just this front cover with the, with the correct clip on it. That might be the easiest way to go. Either that or I'm going to have to solder on a piece um, and that might be a little weak. So we'll, I haven't decided yet on that, but we'll have to fix that. Here's all the... <clears throat> This is, uh, this is the rear wheel truck and the front wheel truck. All of the wheels and axles uh, are grease free. You can see that axle cleaned up very, very well. Um, I'm going to take uh, my little Dremel tool here and off camera I am going to uh, wire wheel the, uh, the bright parts. That'll make them shiny again and, and look like it did when it was new. So those are pretty well set. All of the connecting rods, the driver rods, and the screws have been through my cleaner. Uh, the chrome pieces like these, I'm going to actually buff. I've got a small buffer here. That's not the kind of thing that's very exciting to watch. But that'll make the chrome nice and shiny again. So I will clean those up. These have all been through the ultrasonic cleaner. So they're all grease free and clean. So every part here is good. These are some of the electrical parts. This is the, the brush holder. And you can see that cleaned up very well. I'm going to be putting new wires on. These old wires with this cloth insulation, that cloth insulation deteriorates over time. So I'll be replacing that. And um, the, this is the main assembly of the motor. And that uh, cleaned up really, really nicely. Um, what I want to do is test the field coil. I want to make sure we get a little bit of resistance uh, through that. Um, if it's been fried, um, that means some of the coils have, have uh, kind of melted together and there'll be uh, much less resistance. You'll get a, um, a reading close to zero and that would be not good. I'll also check this. This is the uh, stator, what they call it. This has got windings that go to these commutator bars. And so I'm just going to take my, my electrical tester here. I'm going to go to the ohms uh, resistance piece here and let's see what we get. So I'm going to put my tester on this arm and see what I get. I, I'm looking for, okay, whoops. That's about 1.5. I'm looking for consistency. I don't care really what the number is. I want it to be consistent among all the all the three commutator bars. We go to this one. Whoops, I got a attach here. Okay. I need three hands, so I only have two. All right, here we go. So between these two, 1.5. Between these two, 1.5. Okay, so we're that's testing out very nicely. They're all uniform. That means we don't have any damage to the windings on this. So I'm going to be polishing the commutator bars here. They're a little scored. Even after they've been through the cleaner, you can see they're still dirty. So we want those to be very shiny and smooth and flat. And um, what I'm going to do is actually put this in. I have a small lathe over there, a small jeweler's lathe. I'm going to put this motor in the lathe so it's turning. And I will take a, a um, actually it's this, it's, a, it's an abrasive buffing stick. And I will be rubbing that against the copper as it's spinning in the lathe. And that will smooth and polish that. And then I'm also going to polish the ends of the shaft here. Because those are what ride in the bearings. Um, let me show you. So on one end of the motor, 
we have this bronze bushing that the motor rides in. So I want to polish the shaft on the buffing wheel so it's nice and smooth. We want minimum friction. Friction robs power from the thing. So we want everything to be nice and bright. And I'll also take a very small wire brush and clean out the inside of that so that's nice and smooth. And all the dirt, anything that's gritty, we want out. And again, I'll do both ends of that. Likewise, these are the points where these axles go through. I'm going to buff those on the inside and I'm going to buff the actual shaft of the axle. So we have minimum friction here. And um, these are the points that pick up the power off that middle rail on a Lionel system. There's two of them. They're both connected here and they connect to a wire that goes up to um, the motor. And so we want all of this these surfaces to be nice and, and shiny. So I'm going to use my little Dremel tool and buff those up as well. Um, so we're in really good shape. I'm happy to say that I think this motor is going to work once it's cleaned up. I'm going to polish a bunch of parts. There's no point in showing you uh, me standing there at the buffing wheel and polishing the chrome and buffing the uh, contact points and cleaning this up. But trust me, uh, with an hour or two's fussy labor, um, these will all be nice and shiny and ready to reassemble. And um, so when I come back, you can expect to see all of the parts fully cleaned, fully polished. And at that point, we will, uh, we will start to put it back together. All right. See you then. <clears throat> All right, so it's the next day. Let me give you an update. I now have all the parts cleaned. This is the basic motor uh, housing. I've polished everything, shined up the, um, the wheels that pick up the power off that middle rail. I've cleaned out the bushings here. I use these, I buy these uh, nice wooden stick cleaners and I'm able to get all that clean. So this is ready to go. We've tested the resistance on the field coil and that's fine. I do need to solder two new wires on. There's a wire that connects right here at the top of the field coil and the other wire connects down here and it's connected to the uh, center wheel trucks. Both of these are uh, connected uh, so it's a single circuit and that'll pick up the power and take it up to this switch. Um, so I'm going to be soldering on the new wires. I'm not going to show you the soldering. I'm actually going to replace the wires that are on here as well. I did go through my junk out in the shop and I found a coil of wire that's the same gauge in multiple colors. So I'll be able to pretty closely match what was on here. Uh, the wire that <coughs> had the cloth, this was originally white. Uh, I will use the white plastic wire and again the black plastic wire to, to solder those on. I'm not going to show you the soldering. That'll just take too long and be a little tedious. So um, I'm going to do the electrical work next and then we're basically going to be ready to reassemble. But let me show you the other parts I've got cleaned. This is the motor and if you look now the commutator bars are nice and smooth and shiny. I've polished those on my lathe and I've cleaned the gear and I've polished the ends of the shaft where it goes through the bushings where it spins. So it's going to be as friction free as possible. So that is ready to go. Uh, here are all the wheels and axles. Again, I have polished the axles. I have cleaned the gears completely. I've taken a wire wheel in my Dremel tool and I've gone all the way around these wheels, actually gone over the wheels in their entirety. So they look really nice now. Um, and the gears are all nice and clean. They will get some special grease uh, when I reassemble. And the front and rear trucks. Uh, these actually had a lot of buildup uh, in the inside corner of the wheels. And those are all fully cleaned. Looking like new. Here's the rear one. Um, so these are, these are all ready to go. Uh, the chrome parts on the side. There was a little bit of rust on some of them. Um, so they don't polish perfectly, but they're much brighter and shinier. I've gone over them all. The way I do the polishing, by the way, is I use a little benchtop buffer. Here it is. It's a variable speed unit, a cheapie made in China that I got on Amazon. All the small parts, like these screw heads, 
I have this uh, keyless Jacob chuck on a wooden handle and I can chuck these into the end of the chuck so I don't lose them and I can buff them against the spinning wheel. That's how I get the, the small parts clean. So those, everything in this tray has been buffed and polished. I've actually taken these screws out to uh, polish the rods. This is the one that goes out of the steam piston to, to the drive wheel. And uh, so all of these have been cleaned and polished. So that's all ready to go. It's nice and shiny. The electrical parts are all clean. The, um, in addition to the commutator bars, these are the brushes. Um, and uh, so I have taken the wire wheel to these and then I put them in the lathe and I polished the surface that runs against the commutator bar. So it's going to make excellent smooth contact there. Uh, so I really think this is going to this is going to run very nicely uh, when we get it back together. So I'm going to go off camera, do my soldering, and when we come back, it'll be time for reassembly. <clears throat> All right, here's a little update. I know I said we'd be ready for reassembly when I came back, but I want to show you I had a small problem when I was soldering on the wires, and I want to point it out to you. So this is the motor case. I've soldered the new wire down here uh, at the bottom, which is connected to these pickup wheels that pick up the uh, power from the center of the uh, track. But up at the top here, I'm gonna, the field coil, one end of this winding is attached to these steel bars. That's the solder point right there. And the other was at the center here where the last strand of that wire comes up and it connects to this. But this um, insulated kind of non-conductive plate, it's made of kind of layers of paper, actually. Uh, when I unsoldered the old wire, they had a hole in it that you could take the new wire and wrap it around the hole. But the paper was all deteriorated and the hole kind of tore away. And so I don't have a good solid attachment point and any pulling on this wire would risk uh, ripping the connection off this very fine copper coil. And so what I did is I went to some old school technology. I actually took an antique uh, egg beater drill uh, from my collection because it has the smallest chuck I have. So I needed to drill a very small hole. And so I drilled a small hole, I don't know if you can see it, here on the, kind of on the side that I could run this wire through so that it has some pull resistance. And then I brought it back around to the front and I'm gonna solder it right there where the field coil uh, wire terminates. So that's the repair I had to make. Um, it's a little unconventional, but it's gonna be very strong. Anything I would have tried to do at the center here would have been weak because that paper had deteriorated so badly. So I wanted to show you that before I went any further. Um, and I do expect now when I come back, I'll have all the new wires attached to, to the motor frame and to the switch and go into the light and all that stuff. And we'll be actually ready for reassembly. So here we go. Okay, so we're back. I'd love to be able to tell you that all this soldering was really easy, but it was actually a nightmare. Um, everything is in a confined space. It's tight on this switch here which actually goes this way this is the lever that sticks up out of the top of the cab it's a ratcheting switch when you when you have it engaged when you turn the power on and off it'll go to reverse and then you turn the power on and off it'll go forward and then if you take this off it just stays in forward um, and all these little solder connections i had to make are down on these tiny little tabs so i ended up separating this switch body and then all the spring-loaded parts fell out and um, which the one advantage is I was able to polish up all the contacts and everything and this this had to come off and this came out and so you know I don't even want to tell you how much time I spent but it was a lot of work to get these wires soldered on I left the existing wire for the light because that's in fine shape but I put a new wire to the um, to the smoke unit and then these leads go to the motor from the switch uh, as they're supposed to. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start reassembling the motor. Okay, so 
on further thinking, what I decided to do was inside here, there are little springs that hold the brushes down. And if you see them right here, there's the, there's the spring and it pushes all the way to the other side. So I took this piece of wire that I use for grabbing springs and I pulled the spring up through and I just hooked it over the edge. So both springs are no longer engaging where the brushes will be. I can now put this on here and it goes like, oops, it goes like this. Okay, there it is. I'm gonna now screw that down and that will let me then drop the brushes in and then put the springs on top which I think is going to be far, far easier. Okay, so we'll put this other screw in. You'll notice that I've magnetized my screwdriver. I just use this little magnetizer. You just run it in here and it makes the tip magnetic. It makes it much easier to pick up the, the screws and not drop them into, especially the small ones. So now the, the motor is in the frame and um, it spins freely. And now what I'm gonna do is take the two brushes and drop them into the brush holders. And there's a little slot in there for the spring to engage in. So I'm gonna line that up and I'm gonna grab the spring with my little tool and hook those over the brushes, just like that. And now my brushes are installed and they are pressing the brushes are pressing against the commutator. Okay, so before I attach everything, I'm gonna remount this reversing switch actually fits in here into the frame of the motor like this, right there. Okay. And the smoke unit and the light go forward. These are the leads that go to the motor to actually to the field coil and down to the switch or right down to the pickup. And these leads come from the switch and go back here to the brushes. So I'm going to mount these leads onto the brush posts. And um, just back the screw out a little bit. Come on. Okay. There's one. Okay. And we'll put the other one on this post. Full wrap if I can. Here we go. And we'll tighten that screw. All right. So now I'm going to put there's a screw that holds the uh, switch into the motor frame. We'll put that in. Okay. So now, in theory, this thing is ready to rock and roll. Um, this set of wires was just kind of pressed back here, like so. Now, I don't have a transformer to test this engine, but um, what I think I can do is probably rig up... It goes up to 25 volts for full speed. Um, I think what I could do is take like a battery from a cordless tool and uh, get some power to this unit and see if the motor uh, comes on. That would be a good test. And also test this switch. So let's, uh, let me, give me a moment to come up with something there and I'll be back. Okay, so I'm ready to test it. I've taken, this is a battery out of a 10.8 volt Bosch cordless screwdriver. And I've used my meter here to test. This is the red wire is coming off the positive post, 
and the yellow is coming off the negative. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to connect the red wire. I'm going to touch the red wire to the pickup, which would be picking up the positive power off that center rail. And I'm going to find a bare spot. This is a good bare spot here on the motor frame to act as the ground. And let's see what we get. So I'm going to touch the power to, oops, to the pickup wheel and to my ground. Hey, listen to that. The motor is running and it is going forward. So let's see if this reversing switch works. Wait a minute. Okay. Now the way this works is every time the power goes off, it ratchets to the opposite direction. So it should click. Yup. And now the motor is spinning backwards. When I touch it again, yes, the motor was spinning forward. And if I touch it again, yeah. So this, this is all working perfectly. I'm really happy. So I know my reversing switch, which ratchets back and forth is working. I know the motor is working. So now it's just a matter of putting this whole thing back together. Um, so it looks in all its glory, uh, but the worst part of it is definitely over. We have a beautifully rewired, correctly smoothed and buffed uh, motor frame and assembly. So all good. I'm really happy. All right. So the next thing we have to do before we put the engine assembly back into the body is we've got to mount all these wheels and axles. So what I did here is I took this artist brush and my little bit of grease and I applied just a tiny bit of grease to the teeth of the gears and wiped off any excess that's on the surface. I only want it just in the teeth of the gears. So I've already done all that. Now we're going to take this and we're going to mount our gears. This is the gear that picks up the power off the electric motor and brings it to this secondary gear, which is going to engage with the wheel trucks. So we're going to put, this is the center wheel. It's different than the other two. It doesn't have a flange on it. So I know that one goes here. And that's the one that's picking up the power off the motor gear driven pulley and transferring it also to this one. So it goes to both wheels. And then we have these two which are the same. I don't see any difference between those two. But when we put them in, we have to be careful to line up the positions for all the rods are not going to go on if these are not in the same position. So I'm going to position that so that the axle and the hole for the rods are vertical. And we'll put this next one in. and have that vertical. And we'll put this last one in and have that vertical. So now our wheels are all in the same position. There we go. Which means that those connecting rods are all going to fit properly. And I'm going to turn this over and now we have to do the same on the other side and we have to get those all lined up. So we have three wheels on the other side. They are the same except for the center wheel. Again, I want to get the want to get pointing vertically. And I'm just going to lightly attach it. Just check on the other side. Oops. It's very easy to get these out of position. One tooth difference and it doesn't work. Okay. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just do one at a time here. I'm going to do, I'm going to get the one opposite here. So I've got, I'm pointing up. Pointing up. Okay, so that's in the right position. And what 
I'm going to do is I'm going to take a clamp and I'm going to tighten that so that that does not shift. Okay, and let's just make sure I'm, I'm vertical on this side and it appears that I'm not in the same position. I got to take that wheel back off. <laughs> so this is going to be a little bit of fun. Uh, hang on. All right, so I'm attempting this again here. I've, I've taken the other two back out. I got this one pointing up. I'm going to do the other side exactly opposite. So I've got this one pointing up and this one pointing down, which is where I want it. So now we'll take the clamp and we'll tighten that up. And hopefully we will be able to confirm that I got that on right. Okay. And let's look. We are up, we are down. Okay, I want to go. I didn't get that pressed on quite all the way. I need to give it a little bit more squeeze. there we are. So now my wheel and axle are flush. There's a little bit of end play. We just give that another squeeze. Just make sure we don't have... Okay. That's good. Okay. I'm confirming I've got up on this side. I've got down on that side. Great. Let me just turn those around, and I would say we have success. Okay, so this can now be put back into the train body. And let's take the train body here. Drop this in, it goes about like that. We have a pin that goes across the front. Where is that? This. screw in okay so far so good let's get some of the other parts on here I'm gonna work, clean up a little bit and I'll come back Okay, we're in the home stretch. You can see I have all the connecting rods on this side and on this side I've taken an, my needle oiler and I've put a tiny drop of oil on every point that moves and on the uh, pickup rollers. So everything is lubricated and uh, all back in order. The only thing we have left to do other than fixing the bulb holder on the front is to mount these trucks. Well, it goes this way. There we are. And we're going to put this screw through. all in place and then we'll put the front truck on which go 
goes like this. Okay, so let's just put a little bit of lube on the front axles here. And on the rear axles. And what I've learned about, and I've learned doing clocks, is that you only want the very smallest amount of oil, any extra doesn't make it lubricate any better. It just provides more places for dirt and dust to sit and gum it up. So there we have it. Um, other than repairing the uh, clip here, and I'm going to look and see if I can find one of these reasonably on eBay. If it's like 10 bucks or less, that's fine. Um, that'll be better because it'll have the right clip to hold the light bulb. So the light bulb, actually, I can screw the light bulb in. Put the light bulb back in. And um, there it is. And we got our reversing switch on the front that's working. And it's all good.